Good morning. Usually I'm kind of the star of the show here and giving you all of the information that we're providing for the week. But today the elusive Brian is going to be the star of the show and he is going to be the star because he's going to be teaching you about our electrical system here off the grid. And it's just, it's something I know how to operate, but I just know which switches to push and that sort of thing. So I'm going to have him like give you the better explanation of everything. So without further ado, here's Brian. Good morning, folks. Welcome to our bodega. This is where we house our generator, as in Panama, known as a planta. Um, when we got here, we were supplied with a original diesel caterpillar generator, which ran everything on the property. And after being vac uh, vacant for five to seven years, um, all we had to do is bring a mechanic out, change the fluids, change the gasoline, clean it up a little bit, and it fired right up. And it's been working great since then. So we're still trying to find out what model it is. It's a Caterpillar generator. We don't know how big, so we think it's somewhere between 25 and 50 kVA. So it's big enough to power a small city. So what we have here, this is our main power system, and we've decided instead of running it 24-7, which would cost us a fortune in diesel. And be super loud, which I can't And super handle. loud. We have it tied into our new outback off-grid power system. Uh, so when the generator's on, we usually run it about two to three hours in the morning and two to three hours in the evening. And we've got four gel cell batteries, 48 volts, that run everything up top, no problem. We have refrigerators, uh, lights, fans, computers, everything, and it seems to handle it all quite well. Uh, the Outback, si Outback system is really good because it monitors everything. If you have Wi-Fi, you can download an app and it will send everything to your phone. You can track your battery levels, you can track error messages, and you can have a up-to-date timing on what percentage you're at. So you could even set warnings, I believe, if you want to get it to a certain level. Um, our technician has set it at 60%, so when the battery levels hit 60%, the whole system will shut down to save the battery since they are gel cell because they are quite expensive. Uh, the monitoring system on this is great. We've got a series of uh, four lights here, or five actually. You've got red, which is means it's completely dead, and a green at the top, which means 90 to 100%, and every yellow light that goes out below that is another 10%. So we have 90 to 100, 80 to 90, 70 to 80, 60 to 70, and death. So when it hits optimum charging, the top green light will start flashing. And in conjunction, over here, you have your percentage level. It will tell you what direction it's going. So right now the arrow's down, so it means it's draining the batteries. It's pulling a charge. So that's what percentage we're at now. When we start the generator, the arrow will flip and tell you which way you're going and tell you how much you have charged down. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to start the generator. You'll notice the lights come on. You'll see a flashing light over here saying there is power input, which will coincide with this green light here going from the inverter, going to the charging system, which, which means everything's being charged right now. Oh, and one quick thing. This is uh, first thing in the morning. So we actually have our other unit online now. So our other unit also has a refrigerator, not near as big as the one that, that we have, but another refrigerator and more fans in that because we kind of wanted to see how much we're pulling. And was the generator at 100% last night when we turned it off? We were about 98% last night. And overnight, we drew about 22 to 24% off the batteries. Okay, and normally we draw about... 15, uh, 15 to 17? to 17%. Okay, yeah. All right, so adding those additional things has definitely affected it, but not bad. Because remember, as long as we're staying above 60, we're, we're happy. We're good, yes. Yeah. Okay. So show us how this whole thing works. So all we got to do is flip our switch here. And it's going to get loud, guys.
Okay, Brian is going to talk more about our electrical system. We had to get away from the noisy generator and out of the rain. All right, Brian, take it away. All right. Let me preface this thing by saying that if we had nothing here to begin with, we definitely would have went solar all the way around. But when we moved on to the property, we had a probably a $15,000 generator sitting there waiting for us. And with just, uh, you know, four or $500 worth of uh, maintenance, it fired up first time and we have power to run everything on this property. But we didn't want to run it full time, like we said, so we wanted to add a battery backup system to it so we could run either or. And after talking, talking to a few people, um, some people were a little leery about just running a generator and batteries. Uh, they weren't sure how it would work, but I was able to get a hold of a guy named Victor out of David, and we will put his company's info uh, in the comments and everything, but he was very good, very professional, knew exactly what he was doing. He supplied us with the Outback system, which are highly rated systems for off-grid, solar, everything. They, uh, they really have got a good, good product going out there. Um, so he brought that out and tied us in to our generator, which, like I explained, we were able to run the generator just four to five hours a day, and uh, the batteries take up everything from there on out. Uh, the only reason we haven't done solar right now is because of uh, just the costing. It, the price point to put the solar in would cost us about... I would say two years worth of diesel to run that generator, which we should definitely have grid power before then. So we were just weighing the cost and it seems to be a better move just to keep up with the generator and the batteries until we get grid power in. At some point we may be able to do solar, you know, if it becomes cost effective, but right now it's not the best plan for us. All right, thank you so much, Brian, for that, because I there are things I deal with, and electricity is not one of them. Okay, so uh, I'm going to link uh, Victor, our, our electric guy that did everything for us. I'm going to link his information. I'm going to uh, show you the costs for everything that we have so you can get a good feel for maybe what that might look like on your own property if you decide to go this route. And other than that, make sure you subscribe. We'll have another video next Friday. I don't know who will be doing the video. Brian did a great job. So maybe I can like take a vacation from videos. That will be awesome. All right, we'll see you next Friday.